somebody at a talk show who wrote a book about Lincoln, and he said he talked to Gore Vidal about it, who'd written Lincoln a novel, and he was doing his, I'll do my impression of his bad impression of, of Gore Vidal, and you know, he asked Gore where he thought he should start, and Gore thought for a minute and go, well, why don't you start with a bang bang? <laughs> and I'm like, you know, you picture Gore Vidal saying that. And I, you know, that always, I, you know, it just stuck in my head because I thought, really? Like, I don't think I would start there. But I, you know, I've been, for years I've been twisting this over in my head and wondering, you know, I was here, you know, Gore says I should start here, you know, and I didn't. But, um, but I think there's a reason for that. With Lincoln, we've all met Lincoln in a, in a sense. You know, we know what he's all about. We also know who John Wilkes Booth is. We're already introduced to these characters. So you don't need that lead up. It's already in us. Um, and you can start right to the action. But also, I, Stella, I think there's a, there's a big suspense of build up to the, to the murders. Um, you know, why start up here with the murders when you can, you know, you can bring them closer and closer to the edge of the seat and get there? So what I decided to do was, my next version, I think we're on three, is, um, and I'm not even looking, okay, so I want to take, um, oh, sorry, not there. <laughs> I want to take the last 50 pages of the before story and move that to here and start it there. So I wanted to start with just the last weekend, and I figured out, also with Columbine, as I figured this out, I was thinking in theoretical terms, but also in terms of my material, and so many incredible things happened in the last five days before Columbine. They, ha they had prom that weekend. Um, you know, there was this amazing scene that I started with, with Mr. D addressing the whole student body on Friday morning. I'm like, thank you for timing that, you know, four days or whatever it is, you know, before my cataclysm. Um, and, and the fact, I also knew it would be very, very dramatic to have, you know, some of these scenes with Mr. D in the class, and then Eric and Dylan would be in there trying to get guns, and, you know, that's, that's intense. It's chilling, knowing that, you know, Mr. D's talking about death and life and loving you, and these two kids are sitting there, you know, <coughs> cracking it. You know, we're going to kill you all um, on Monday. And then, you know, they couldn't make it work for Monday. So there's such incredible drama. So it just worked perfectly. Like, okay, here's what I'm doing. Here's my before. Is those five days and 50 pages. So there's the before, and then, um, then the during, and then somehow still the, the main before and after. But I still have the same Private Ryan problem here with all this during stuff here, because uh, I knew like that's the most intense by far, is the murder. So I decided to break this up in chunks, I think in five chunks, and I would do it in flashbacks, and somehow move all these chunks into the, af into the after story. And the last chunk would be the climax of the book, which is when they got to the suicides. And that would be the most dramatic thing. And that would be the end of the before story, so it would be naturally there, because it would just come there. But the other ones, I would have flashbacks. And I decided, because this is going to be somehow a big mess, the flashbacks couldn't be random. Like, there's two ways to do a flashback. You can do it where it's just, you know, Faulkner, I'm reading Faulkner late in August now, and you know, you just get to chapter 5, and suddenly you're 20 years earlier. And then, okay, you know, now I figured that out. Um, he just throws it at you. And a lot of great stuff. It's an amazing book, obviously. Um, the other way to do it is say, you know, a couple is having a horrible, bitter argument, they're in the middle of the argument, and then you take them back to 20 years before, when they first got married, and then, you know, so you sort of take the material that's going on and use that to your flashback. I decided since this is going to be so messy, I didn't know how I was going to do it, but it was going to be really messy, I was going to be jumping around in time constantly, that I better make these flashbacks simpler. So what I figured out was, um, in this after story, at some point we're going to get to Dave Sanders and the controversy over the fact that the SWAT team, you know, didn't get there for almost four hours. At that point in the after story, then I will take you back into Science Room 3 and show him bleeding to death for three hours. So I will hold that information until I get here so I can take you back. Also, Cassie Bernal. Later in the story down the road, it will be months before it's discovered that the whole thing is a myth, that it didn't really happen. So I will just have you leading along like everything's fine, when I, and, but never show you her dying. When I get to the point uh, of, of um, that being uncovered in the after story, then I take you back into the, into the library and let you witness it firsthand and meet Emily Wyant um, and Bree Pasquale and see the whole thing play out. Um, and then Patrick Ireland, when he 
I guess I did him first when he goes out the window. How did I do him? <laughs> I, uh, yeah, you introduced him when he too. came out the window. Yeah. The first time you really got to know So him. maybe his wasn't a flashback. Maybe that was still, like I said, it was still during it. Hmm. Maybe I didn't have that many flashbacks. I, I might be missing one. But I decided that each one, they're sort of organic while you're going along the story. So hopefully you don't even notice that much that, you know, we're doing another break in time. That even though these are going back and forth, now you know, we're back and forth and back and forth plus going here. But this one is simpler because you're sort of already in the midst of that story. And you don't feel like you did a flashback. You stay in that story. So that's how I arranged them. And these two... Then the, the final thing was getting these to work, um, and I really thought, again, I thought there were two ways of going about it, and I was sure, well, one is just to just go jump back and forth between them, or tell them both chronologically. The other way, which I thought I was going to do, is Fusillet, I thought Fusillet, the FBI agent, would be the protagonist here, and as he solved the case, each time he learned something, he would take it back to the killers, and, you know, him going through the diaries or whatever. And we would learn about them that way. But that didn't work for so many reasons. I couldn't get over the corniness of, like, how am I going to do, like, oh, he's reading the journal and now I take you back there. But I could see doing that in a movie or even a radio program. I couldn't really figure out how to do that in a book. But the other reason, I mean, there were, like, several reasons where it just wasn't working. One was I felt like, you know, keeping a fragmented version of Eric and Dylan's life and you'll never get the sense of them developing and the suspense of them, like, you know, now Eric's like a sophomore, and he's already starting to cause trouble, and like, something's definitely wrong with this kid. Or in freshman year, you start to feel like he's already writing essays like difference, Differences Between Zeus and I, which he gets grammatically incorrect, I love that he got the title wrong. But um, when he's like saying how arrogant he is. But anyway, you're starting to see flashes of his like, ego, egomania when he's a freshman in high school, so that gradual build, you lose that if you don't do it chronologically. So then I, I finally decided, I mean, I'm about three years into, so year eight or so is when I decided to just go back and forth and tell them both chronologically, so these both go start to finish, but with different ending points. And so, I mean, it, if timeline, if you start, this is like when Eric and Dylan are born. So after the murders, we're just going ahead like this, and then we got the after story. They're both going forward in time, but they're going like this. So like this chapter, then this one, then this chapter, then this, and... So we're just going ahead like that. So both are going forward in time. And also, I saw Memento around that time, and I figured you can have two stories, and have going, one going forward and the other one's going backwards and meeting in the middle, alternating like, I'm like, I could pull this off. Um, so that's, you know, that's basically, there's a few more little odd quirks, but like, so I mean, so, you know, it starts a little bit before, then during, then back and forth between these with little flashbacks. Well, and, but that's how I'll figure it out. And, but that's when, oops. <laughs> like two days before it went to copy editing. So this is year like more like year nine and a quarter is when I finally did the final version of alternating the chapters completely. Believe it or not, I wasn't alternating the chapters at the beginning until that flash had gone through everything through my editor and his assistant all the rounds until I realized that. Um, I wasn't, I wasn't alternating the first chapters. Okay, so what I, I guess I should say. In the beginning, I thought, I still, at the very end, I started alternating the chapters on page about 100 or 110. And I knew that was a problem. But I felt like this, this 50 pages in the beginning, it was day by day. There was a chapter for Friday, one for Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. And it was organized by date. And I didn't want to break that up. So I didn't want to be alternating. And then suddenly, and no one figured this out, in this flash right before it went to copy it, I realized, oh, well, all I have to do is take each of those days and cut the chapters in half. Like Friday, there's already material on the killers and the survivors in each of those chapters. Basically cut them in half, and I had to move a few scenes around, I did a little shuffling, but not much. I mean, in like an hour, I had to shuffle and cut in half. And it, it changed everything, because, you know, um, I mean, you have to start a convention if you're going to do it on page right. one. 